Hello friends, welcome back. Today I am going to discuss Programming Languages Paradigm. Programming Languages Paradigm is a strategy or an approach for solving some problems or some tasks by using some programming languages. There are many programming languages in the market today. Almost 250 plus programming languages are available. All these programming languages fall under any of the categories that I am going to tell in this video. Say for example, there are so many fruits in the world today, but based on the common commonalities among the fruits, uh, common features among the fru fruits, they fall under some categories like berry fruits or melon fruits or citrus fruits. Likewise, the programming languages that exist in the world also fall under some of the paradigms. Now, what, how the paradigms have evolved? Let us look into the evolution of the paradigms. Now, initially, um, okay, before getting into that, let me tell you what does it mean by programming. Programming is solving some computational problem by using some set of instructions of some programming language. So, uh, this set of instructions are given to the computer and the computer will draw you the result. So, this is, this is what happens. Now, based on the, I mean the requirements of the human beings are increasing day by day. The demand, keeping the demand of the human beings and also the uh, uh, expectations of the human beings, the software developers are uh, trying to look for new paradigms. Initially, in 1950s, there was, one, there, there was one programming paradigm, which is monolithic programming paradigm. Monolithic programming paradigm uh, uh, have the set of instructions in a single block. Um, if you write 100 lines of code or 200 lines of code, all this code will be in a single block. The disadvantage in monolithic programming paradigm is that in case if there are four lines and you want to repeat those four lines again somewhere around in your program, you have to duplicate those four lines, meaning that you will be increasing the size of the code and obviously the efficiency drops. So keeping this drawback in mind, the software developers rectified this uh, issue from the monolithic programming paradigm and procedural programming paradigm have evolved. The procedural programming paradigm have procedures in it. Procedures are nothing but functions and functions are nothing but subtasks that you perform to solve the computational problem. So here in uh, even in monolithic there is go to function and even in procedural, uh, procedural programming paradigm there is go to function. But the only thing they did is that there are functions over here and you needn't duplicate the code you can call the function again and again. So that was the enhancement that they made from monolithic programming paradigm. But what happened in procedural programming paradigm is that there is go to function and go to uh, statement is considered to be um, go to statement okay go to statement is considered to be one of the indiscipline kind of statement which is having its own side effects so which is actually ruining the execution of the program which sometimes ruins the execution of the program so uh, there was huge debate at that time to remove the go to function and uh, go to uh, statement and later on what they did is go to statement is removed and uh, structural uh, programming paradigm evolved in structural programming paradigm, go to statement is not there and also the modules concept has been introduced. Modules can have more than one function in it. Each and every function will be uh, solving a subtask of the whole computational problem that we want to solve. And uh, later on what happened is in 19, uh, mid 1980s, uh, they thought that we need another programming language which should be platform independent and all that. And also it should be uh, addressing the real world entities like the class and objects. And in mid 1980s, object oriented programming paradigm evolved. So by all this evolution, what we are able to understand is that um, uh, it's a continuous process and it's an enhancement from the previous program the drawbacks have been removed or rectified in the next programming paradigms so what uh, what, what 
I mean, what will you gain by knowing about all this evolution of the programming paradigms? Okay, once you learn about this, this part, this divisions in the programming paradigms or the knowledge about the programming paradigms, it will help you to best use the programming languages that you already know and also will help you in actually structuring or constructing your logic for solving the computational problem. I broadly classify uh, the programming paradigms into two. There are many, many paradigms existing, but I am discussing the popular divisions. The first division is the imperative programming paradigm and the second is the declarative programming paradigm. Let me give you an analogy of uh, uh, how the imperative and declarative look like. Say you want to meet a gynec. Okay, so what you do, I am discussing about the imperative kind of programming paradigm. So in imperative programming paradigm, if you want to meet a gynec, you actually go to the hospital that you want to go and then you meet the receptionist then and ask for the gynec department and the receptionist will divert you to the floor where the gynec uh, uh, outpatient uh, uh, exists and you go to that floor, meet again another receptionist there in the gynec uh, outpatient uh, department and then you take your token, wait for your chance, meet the doctor and come back. So this is an example of imperative uh, programming paradigm. What exactly you did here is that you are actually telling the program what, how to actually solve the problem. But the declarative is completely opposite of this. What happens in declarative is that you won't tell how, how to solve the problem. You just tell what you want. So you, what you will do is you will say, I want to meet a gynec doctor and you will leave it to the uh, paradigm to actually decide how to solve it. So this is the difference between imperative and declarative kind of programming paradigms. In imperative programming paradigms, there are two kinds. One is the procedural programming paradigm and the other is the object oriented programming paradigm. I already discussed about procedural and also discussed about object oriented paradigm. So let me give you examples of procedural programming paradigm. Fortran, COBOL, C, all these are examples of procedural programming paradigm. Python, uh, Java, C++, Ruby, all these are examples of object oriented paradigms. Now it doesn't mean that uh, one language falls strictly under one programming paradigm. It can be a combination of two or three or multiple programming paradigms. Example, Java is not only object oriented, for, Java not only falls under the object oriented programming paradigm, it also have got some of the features from the functional uh, programming paradigm. Uh, the second category is the declarative programming paradigm. In declarative programming paradigm, there is two kinds. One is, uh, there are two kinds. One is the logic, uh, logical programming paradigm and the other one is the functional programming paradigm. Under logical programming uh, paradigm has got such basics from the mathematical foundation. It is completely rule based uh, programming paradigm. And uh, examples of uh, logical programming paradigm are your prologue. And coming to the functional programming paradigm, it is purely function based and applying functions on the parameters and uh, examples of functional programming paradigms are lisp and scheme and uh, the machine learning algorithms comes under the category of logical programming paradigm and artificial intelligence comes under the category of the functional programming paradigm. Um, This is all about uh, the programming paradigms my friends. I uh, hope this video is helpful to you. Uh, thank you for watching my video and please watch my upcoming videos as well. Uh, happy learning. Bye.